أردتم أن تكونوا شابة بين الورى فاختفوا آثار جيل للمعالي سطرا إن أردتم أن تكونوا شابة بين الورى فاختفوا الحمد لله يضع فما حمده جميع خلقه كما يحبه ويرضى اللهم صل على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأكرة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاه سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد First of all, we give our praise and all thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the favors and bounties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on us and we send salat and salam on his last and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as we continue with Aqidat al-Tahawi on sentence number five the Arabic goes Qadimun bila ibtida Daimun bila intiha again for the second time the Arabic Qadimun bila ibtida Daimun bila intiha I the translation Qadimun means he is the eternal Bila ibtida without any beginning Daimun he is enduring he is always existing Bila intiha without any end so this is a quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is an issue that especially among the scientists they do, they do not believe in it right? we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was always existing before the world was even created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was always existing and Allah continued to exist without ever having any beginning and that's why in Surah Ikhlas we say Lam yalid wa lam yulad he doesn't have any parents he has no mother, he has no father. And because of him having no parents, he has no creator. Nobody created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah was always existent. So Qadima means he's eternal. He was always existent. Bila ibtida, without any beginning. He never had any beginning. Nobody created him. He was not born to no one, no mother, no father. Nobody. See, so he has no beginning. So you cannot ask... How did Allah, what, how did Allah was created? How was Allah created? Allah was never created. Allah was never made. Because He has no beginning. So Allah was always there. That is our belief. And we say, Da'imun bila intiha, as well as He will always be existent. So not only that He was always existent in the past, but He will always be existent bila intiha, without any ending. So the word used is qadim. Qadimun is that which is anterior to something else. It means there was something and then other things came into being. So Qadimun is that which was first. That which was from the beginning. From the inception of something, that is known as Qadim. And then from after that, things come in. So we have Qadimun. And that is why in, um, in the Arabic language, the word Qadimun means old. Something being old. So you have Al-Kitab al qadimu means the old book. Right, the old book. Before this book became old, it was new. And then after some time, other books came into existence. Other books were published, other books were written. So this book now became old, but it was the first book. It was from the inception. So when something was old, means it was there before others. So Qadim means old, something that was there before those which are new existed. And the word new is hadithun. Hadithun means new as well. From that you get muhdathat. The famous kutba, the Rasul used to say, فَإِنَّ أَصْدَقَ الْحَدِيثِ Allah. The best of hadith is the book of Allah. 
فا ان كل محدثه بدع محدث كم في الحديث talking about innovation because it's something new you have brought about so hadith means new and qadim means old and allah uses the word qadim in a few places in the quran one of the places surah yasin in the third ruku in yasin he says wal qamaru qaddarnahu manazila hatta adaka al urjun al qadim the word qadim there and that that ayat the translation wal qamaru qaddarnahu manazil the moon we have Qaddarnahu, we have affixed it, we have decreed for it manazil, different stages. So in the moon, there are different stages in the moon. And Allah says that we have affixed that and we have decreed the different stages that the moon will be in. Manazil, hatta ada kal urjun al qadib, until it returns. It started in one way and then it will return just as how it began. He says, kal urjun al qadib, like uh, ur, urjun means a palm. The, 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 the palm that is shaped in a bow form, that is known as Urjun. Because when you're looking for the crescent, the crescent looks like a bow. So Allah, Allah used the word called Urjun al Qadim, like a very old bow, like a very old palm bow. That is how it will be. And when we look at the stages of the moon, when you're looking for the moon, the, the, the month starts with the moon being the crescent, the new moon. It is very tiny, you can hardly see it. And then on the second night, you'll see how big it will get. That very easy you could see it from the second night go on. And it will go like that until half of the month. And then it will start to, after being full, the entire thing being full, it will start to decrease. It will start to go wrong until it became just as how it began. And when it re reached a stage when it disappeared, because it was like nothing when you were searching for it. When it reached that stage, means the month is coming to and it's time for you to start a new month. So Allah says it was like that, Qadim, he used the word Qadim. That, and that first month became old. That first month, the, how the moon was in the beginning, that was old. Because when a new one come, that's a new moon. That is not the same moon that you saw last month. So Allah says, that, that's why Allah used the word Qadim, it became old. <clears throat> also Allah mentions in Surah Ahqaf, he says about the unbelievers. The unbelievers, when they, most of the unbelievers in Makkah, they were wealthy because most of the poor, they accepted Islam. As that was the case with all the prophets. The wealthy did not want to accept, the poor would accept the message. They would be the first to accept. So Allah mentioned about these unbelievers. Do you say, call Ladina Kafru in Surah Ahkaf? Those that disbeliever, they will say, Lilladina Amanu, they will say to those who believe. So the unbelievers will be saying to the believers, remember the believers, they were not rich, they were very poor. So you're saying these unbelievers now boastfully, proudly, they will come to the unbelievers, to, to the believers, sorry, and they will say, Laukana khairan ma sabakuna ilai. They say, if this thing that you are following, if this religion of Muhammad sallallahu that you are following, if there was any goodness in it, then we would be the first to accept it. But there's no goodness in it, that's why we are not going to accept it. They are wealthy, they are proud. So they say, if only we knew that this had any amount of goodness in it, we would be the first. You wouldn't have been able to, to accept it, we would have accepted it before you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِذْ لَمْ يَحْتَدُوا بِهِ فَسَيَكُولُونَ هَذَا إِفْكُنْ قَدِيمٌ the word Qadim is used. Allah said, because they were not guided. Because they were not guided, they will be saying, Fasayakuluna, you will hear them saying, Hada ifkun Qadim, this is a very ancient falsehood. Qadim here referring to ancient, very old. It's a very old falsehood. Meaning because the, the people of Makkah they were idol worshippers. And as being idol worshippers, they, they heard about the Christians saying that Jesus is a, Jesus is so, they, they got a book, they got prophet, then the prophet on God. They heard about Musa and the Jews. So they say, you know what, we are hearing people becoming prophet very often. So this way you are saying that this, this individual, Muhammad, become a prophet, this is a falsehood that has been going on very long. So this is not a new thing we are hearing about. So, so they use the word ifkun qadim. The word qadim is used there again. Also, <clears throat> A part of your body is known as qadam. A limb of your body is known as qadam. Al-qadamu means your foot. 
The Arabic word for foot, there are two words for foot. One is rijlun and the other is qadam. Qadam is also means your foot. And the reason why your, this limb, which is your foot, is known as qadam is because it is the first thing that moves on your body. If you want to move from here to there, what's the first part have to move? Your foot. Your two feet have to move first. So because that is the first limb moving, you got the word qadam. This is your qadam, the first thing that is going to move. So you get that word qadam, your foot meaning from qadim as well. And for something to, to be in front of something, for something to, to be in the inception or to proceed, for someone being in front of the other, there are different reasons. One of the reasons is taqaddam bi ta'thir. Taqaddam bi ta'thir means having that precedence because of ta'thir. Ta'thir means being in front because of a preference. Preceding because of some preference given to you. For example, an example of that is you have a ring on. You want to move this, take off this ring from your hands. Right? You want to take the ring off. But what have to move first before you move the ring? What have to move first before this ring could come off your fingers? Your finger had to move. Could you keep your finger one way all the time and keep it one way and try to get it off? You move your fingers. And that preference is given to the finger. So the finger starts to move first and then you're able to take off the ring. So the moving of the finger is done, why? Not because of a need. It is done because of preference. You give preference to move your finger so that it will be easier to take out the ring. It could come off without moving the fingers. It's not like the ring cannot come off. If you leave your fingers straight, don't move your finger and try to take off the ring, it will come off. But the, the reason you move your fingers to make sure the ring comes off easy. So you give preference to moving the finger first. So one type of going, making something come before the other is out of preference. You prefer this over that. So this one is first and that becomes second. That is out of ta'thir and preference. The next is taqaddum bil haja. Something preceding the other because of a need. That is, before the second thing could exist, the first must be there. Without the first, the second cannot exist. For example, a tree. Could a tree just come into existence just like that? The first thing you have to have is a seed or a, or a small plant before that tree could come into existence. Without that, you cannot have a plant. So that, that first thing is before the second thing could exist, it needs the first. So that's why that is, in, that, is, that is preceding. That is in front. That is the first thing, the seed. Similarly for a child. You want to get a child. A child does not just come just like that must have marital relation before it could come. So the need, that is a need. That action of marital relations must be before that, in that existence of the child. So the, for your child to exist, for you to have a boy or for you to have a girl baby, you need to have something else. That's a need. So that thing that came first came first because of a need. So one was there out of preference. You prefer to move your fingers so that it came out easy. But for you to get a child, it is not out of preference. It is because of a need. Because you cannot get a child without marital relations. The second is taqaddum be sharf. Putting one in front of the other, one preceding the other because of nobility, because of nobility and honor. And that is, for example, in the time when Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he passed away. As you know, when, when he passed away, he did not leave anyone as his successor. He did not leave anyone as a caliph. He died, and at that, as soon as he passed away, they started to have fighting among them. The Ansars wanted somebody from Medina to be, to be the caliph. And like that, when Umar and Abu Bakr, they heard that these Ansars had already settled in a house, and they were already agreeing for one of their people to become the successor. Umar and Abu Bakr, they say, they told Ali, take care of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do the shrouding and everything because Ali was family to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, son-in-law as well as, as cousin. 
So <coughs> they went, uh, Omar Anu, Abu Bakr Anu went to this house and they settled everything. Both put, us, put their, their, why they want this one to be the leader, why they want this one to be the Khalifa. And then Abu Bakr, he jumped up and said, I want Umar to be the first Khalifa. I want him to be the successor. He, 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 said, he, he asked for Umar Anu's hand and said, I want to plead allegiance to you. Because of how Umar Anu was brave and his strength. And Umar Anu, he turned to Abu Bakr and he says, I'm giving you my hands, but I'm going to plead allegiance to you. And then he mentioned many of the things about Abu Bakr Anhu being the best friend of Rasul accompanying him through the migration. That Rasul mentioned many hadiths about the, the virtues of Abu Bakr Anhu. So he was, given, he was given that succession or that uh, preference. That precedence to be the Khalifa because of nobility, because of sharaf. Not because of anything else, but because of being noble and because of being righteous, he was given that. And the, the, the next reason is taqaddam bir rut ratba. That is being in front, giving precedence because of some status this individual hold or because of some knowledge this individual have. So for example, you're in a community, you want somebody to be the Imam. The Imam and the followers do not stand up together. The Imam has to go in front, the followers have to be at the back. So you cannot say, you know what, everybody has to stand up together. There's always somebody in front, there's others at the back. Similarly, when you want to, to choose an Imam, choose somebody to be in front, you choose somebody who has the ability to do that. You cannot just choose anybody just like that. So that, that coming in front came because of status, because of, of being worthy of accepting such and such positions, that individual was able to go in front. Right? So that's the qadam. So these are the different reasons why things could go in front of the other, things could precede the other. And like that, for each one of these, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is deserving to be in front, to be preceding every single thing. Because Allah is what? Allah is the creator. Allah is the greatest, Allah is the most noble, al Karim. Allah, is, Allah should be preferred over every other thing. You cannot be a true believer, besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be more loved to you than anything else. So preference should be given to Allah. We cannot do without Allah. We need Allah for, for every single thing. So remember you have taqaddam bil-ta'thir for preference, we should prefer Allah over everything. We have to cut down bil hajj for need. We need Allah more than any other things. We have to cut down bil shraf and nobility. Allah is al karim, the most noble. So Allah needs to be al qadim, the, the one in front. Then we have to cut down bil ratba. There's no one that could have the status of Allah subhanahu wa taala. So that's why the the, the author he says qadim. Allah is qadim. Allah is in front. Allah is is the force. Allah should be there. Bila ibtidan, he has no beginning. So when we say Al-Qadim, one who precedes everything is called Qadim. And Allah is deserving of that because Allah created everything. And Allah was existing before everything. And Allah has no beginning. And that is very important that Allah has no beginning. We all believe that Allah has no beginning. Allah says in Surah Hadid, in verse 3, Surah Hadid, he says, Allah says, He, Allah is the first, Al Awwal. He, Allah is Al Akhir, He is the last. He is Al Zahir. Al Zahir means that one who has knowledge of all things which is apparent. He is Al Batin, that one who has knowledge of everything that is secret. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is all knowledgeable over everything. Now, this. The two name, the two first qualities is awwal and akhir, the first and the last. Allah is the first, Allah is the last. So what our author is doing in, in sentence five, by saying qadimun bila ibtida and daimun bila intiha, he is explaining these two names, al awwal and al akhir. Because qadimun bila ibtida means Allah is beginning, Allah is the first without any beginning, so he is al awwal, he is the first. Then da'iman bila intiha, he has always been existing, he is enduring without any ending, means Allah is al-akhir, he is the last. 
So the author of the book is explaining al awal and al akhir by giving you the statement qadimun bila ibtida daimun bila intiha. Now this ayat huwa al awwalu wal akhiru wa dhahir wal batinu wa huwa bi kulli shay'in alim. It is mentioned in the hadith of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam that this one ayat, very short ayat, says that this one ayat it is more virtuous and more blessings is given to it than a thousand ayats. Than one thousand ayats. That is one of the virtues has been placed for this ayat. Once a sahaba they came to Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And when they came to Ibn Abbas, they were looking like they were in some doubt. So Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu asked, what is wrong? You're looking like you have some doubt on your mind. Like something was revealed and you're doubtful. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu recited an ayat in Surah Yunus where Allah says, "For in kunta fi shakin, if you are in doubt, mimma anzalna ilaik from what we have revealed to you. If you have any doubts of what was revealed to you, and these days a lot of people have doubts in ayat of Quran. Allah says, if you are in doubt of what was revealed to you, fas aliladina yakroon al kitab min kablik. Then ask those who used to read the book from before you." Ask those who have knowledge of the book, if you are in doubt. Then he says, لَقَلْ جَاءَكَ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكَ Verily, the truth has come to you from your Lord. And then he advised this individual, advising that you should recite. Anytime you are in doubt, you should recite this ayat. هُوَ الْأَوَّلُ وَالْآخِرُ وَالْظَاهِرُ وَالْبَاطِنُ And recite that ayat. So anytime an ayat comes up and you are in doubt, or you are in doubt of something of Islam, you should recite this ayat. And by reciting it, it will bring more iman and more conviction in your heart that yes, Allah is al awwal, Allah is al akhir, Allah is al zahir, and Allah is al batin. There's a famous hadith narrated in Imam Muslim. The Rasul used the term al awwal and akhir as well. A long dua, he says, Allahumma rabbal samawat is sab. O Allah, Lord of the seven heavens, wa rabbal arsh al adim. And O Allah, Lord. Of the mighty throne, because you know Allah is Rabbul Arsh. So He's saying, "O oh Allah, Lord of the seven heavens, Rabbul Arsh al Adim, Lord of the mighty throne, Rabbuna wa Rabbu kulli shay. Our Lord and the Lord of everything, because Allah is the Rabb of us as well, the Rabb of everything." So He says, "Rabbuna, our Rabb, wa Rabbu kulli shay, and the Lord of everything." Munzil al-Tawrata wal-Injil wal-Furqan Who have sent down the Tawrah, the Injil and the Furqan Falik al-Habbi wal-Nawa Who is the cleaver of the hub of the grain And the seed La ilaha illa anta There is no God but you A'udhu bika min sharli kulli shay Then he says I seek protection in you O Allah From the evil of everything I seek protection in you From the evil of everything Anta akhidum binasiyati. You are that one who will take people by their forehead. As you know, those unbelievers they'll be dragged by their forehead. So he says, You Rasulullah Sam in this dua he's making, he's saying to Allah, oh Allah, we seek protection in you from all evil. Every single evil thing we seek protection in you from. Because if we are to do evil, what will happen to us? You will akhidum binasi, you will take us by our forehead and drag us to the fire. Then he will say, Anta al awwalu, laisa qabla ka shay. He says, You are the first, there is none before you. Anta al awwal, you are the first, laisa qabla ka shay. There is none before you. Anta al akhir, you are the last. Laisa ba'da ka shay, there are none after you. Anta al zahir, you are the zahir. You are that one that knows everything. Everything that is apparent, you know. Anta al zahir, laisa fawka ka shay, there is none above you. There's none above you then. Antal batin, you're the batin, you know all the secrets, everything that is hidden. Laisa ba'da kashai. Laisa duna kashai, there's none beside you. And then he said, Iqdi anna dain. This entire dua, Rasulullah Sallallahu is not asking really for anything. Till the ending, he's going to ask for two things. After mentioning all that, he said, Iqdi anna dain, O Allah, remove from us all debts. All loans that we might have, iqdi anna dain. Oh Allah, remove that from us. Then he says, waqdina min al And grant us, save us from poverty. 
Remove all our debts and all our loans that we have, and O oh Allah, grant us and save us from poverty. Do not make us become destitute. And this is a teaching for us. Look at all the long things Rasulullah said before he said these two things. His intention is to ask for two things only removing, helping him to, to remove all the debts, as well as removing poverty, saving him from poverty. And he mentioned all of that long dua teaches us that when we are making dua, we do not just raise our hands and say, Oh Allah, give me this, oh Allah, give me that. We have to praise Allah first. Show Allah that we really are, are His servants. Oh Allah, you are so. Oh Allah, you are Rahman. Oh Allah, you are Rahim. You are Malik. You are Al-Quddus. And we need to, to do those things. And then after, then we say, Oh Allah, give me so and so. Help me with so and so. And that is what Rasul is teaching us. In this, in this dua that he has recited. Next, that there are things that exist. We see things existing. We see clouds, we see the mountains, many things. We see the sea. There are things which exist. And those things which are existing, they cannot exist by themselves. The clouds do not exist by themselves. The cloud did not come about by itself. The oceans and the mountains did not come about by themselves. Similarly, there are things that are non-existent. Things that are non-existent that we might not know about. Things that we might think about, but they are not wrong. They are non-existent. They cannot exist. Our imagination could be very far. Or we can start to imagine this kind of thing or this kind of creature, but it doesn't exist. And for that thing for, to not exist, it does not exist by its own will. It does not choose to be non-existent by its own will as well. So first of all, everything that exists is only existing by the will of Allah and not by itself. And everything that is non-existent, it is only non-existent because Allah do not want it to exist. It cannot say, I want to exist by myself. The only thing that could exist by itself, by its own will, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah say, that, that's why he says Qadimun, that is the meaning of Qadim. He is always exists and he's eternal. Bila ibtida. And Allah says in Surah Tur. Allah says Surah Tur, Am khuliku min ghairi shay. Were they created from nothing? Were they created from nothing? Was it that nothing created them? Allah is asking. Talking about all the false god. Mentioning about these deities and gods that they are worshipping. Allah asks a question. Allah says, Am khuliku min ghairi shay. Were they created from nothing? Was there no maker for them? And this is one of the conditions to know if this is a god or not. To know if it was created by something else, it cannot be God. So for example, Jesus, alayhi salam, he was born. He did not create himself. He did not come about by himself. So definitely he cannot be God. Similarly, the, the idols, the murtis that they have, they make it out of marbles and brass and, and clay and all these different things they make it out of. They are made by our hands. So how could they be God? A God, is only, a God could only be something that no one has created it. Because if something has created it, then that thing is supposed to be God because it is more superior. So we are supposed to be the God of the idols, not the God, the idols be our God. Because we are creating them. So this is something, a God, no one has the right to create a God. A God has to be existing on his own will. So that's what Allah is posing to them. Am khuliku min ghairi shay. Ask those idols if they were created by themselves. If they come into existence by themselves. Ask any of them. Then he says, Am hum al khalikun, or are they created? Were they come by themselves? They, were they existing by themselves? Or was something create them? And definitely there are, there are others that created them. So how could they be God? Then Allah says, another test for them, Am khalakus samawati wal earth. Did they create the heavens and the earth? Do you think any of these idols or any of these other gods that they have, did they create the heavens and the earth? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Balla yukinun. Allah says, put this to any one of them, definitely they are not certain. They cannot answer, they are not certain. Balla yukidun, they are not certain who created their gods, if their gods was created by themselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, 
in Surah Furqan. It says, وَلَا يَأْتُونَكَ بِمَثَلٍ إِلَّا جِئْنَاكَ بِالْحَقِّ وَأَحْسَنَ تَفْسِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they will come to you with different types of arguments. Talking about their gods, these are the gods. Allah said they will come with all types of arguments. And they will come with all types of twisted language. Just to try to trick you to tell you that, yeah, this is our God still. Allah says they will come to you with it. Do not think that they will not come to you. They will try and they will come to you. But Allah says, إِلَّا جِئْنَاكَ بالحق. But you should know that we have already given you the truth, which is the Quran. We have given you the truth, wa ahsana tafsira, and we has, we have given you the best of explanation of who really God is. Allah says we already give you that. If you want to know who really God is, look in the Quran. The Quran teaches us who is really Allah, who is really our God, who is really our Creator. And this has been a question for years. The question is: Is there a God? You know, especially amongst the scientists, they do not believe that there is a God. And they came up with, <clears throat> with the theory of the Big Bang and the theory of evolution. Many of us who went to secondary school will know that as long as you're doing biology, they will, they will teach you about evolution. <clears throat> and everything was evolved. And they, they, those who believe in evolution, they, they believe that 13.7 billion years ago, the war was singular. There was nothing like space. There was just one block of something called the world at that time. And then all of a sudden there was what? There was an explosion. And this theory was, was by Charles Darwin. That's why it's known as the Darwin's theory. So what he says that the world was one. Everything. There was no moon, no sun, nothing. Everything in those, in, in that time, which was 13.7 billion years before, everything was singular, and then there was an explosion. Now, what caused the explosion? They cannot answer what caused the explosion. Who made that explosion? What was the explosion caused from? What, what particle made that explosion? What type, what type of explosion was it? They cannot know. But all they know that it was an explosion. Anyway, there's an explosion. They, made, they, they, they said that this, these explosion made everything into fine particles, very small pieces. And from that, you have all the different planets, and you have Earth and everything. But they said at that time, it was not as big as it is today. Like the Earth at that time, when it broke into pieces, the world broke into pieces, the Earth was not big now. I'll give an example of a balloon. Balloon was small and you blew it up and then it started to extend, it started to expand. That is how the world was. It was small and then it blew up. And it started to get big, it started to expand. And they mentioned that everything just happened by chance. Everything happened just like that. But how could everything happen like that? Imagine something happening like that and we have the sun, the moon and all the planets going around in the same order in, in every single way without anyone crashing to the other. And that's happening for billions of years ago. Everything going around the sun, the moon have its different stages, the sun have its different stages, the different types of weather, the different types of season, and everything has happened so smooth. And they say that that just happened because of that explosion. That explosion that caused, caused everything to be, to be exact how it's supposed to be. Definitely, they, they, this is, anybody who is sane enough will know that, that that cannot happen. It has to have somebody that is controlling it, making sure that it is going like that. And then they mentioned that it broke into pieces, and then there was one cell. One cell, one particle that fall. We didn't know who made that particle fall there. Who made that cell? Where did that cell come from? It just come just like that? Was that created just like that, or somebody made that cell fall there, even if that, there was a cell there? So they say that there's a cell, and from that cell now, everything started to be created from that one cell. So yeah, all the plants and animals and everything in the world came from just that one cell. The entire world came from that. And that came, the, from that day, they add on now the, the theory of evolution, which everything started to evolve. So what they are saying that it started like that with only plants and then a few animals, and then these animals reproduced, and then they got different types of animals, 
and from that they reproduced and got different types of animal until it reached that of apes. And many of us might seen pictures before of you seeing an ape and then a different stage, it's torn in from a little bit different from that of an ape until it reached man. So they say man came from that and it was going on. And uh, what they have mentioned is that the reason why you cannot see, remember up to today you could see ape and you could see man. But what about those different stages? Where, where are those different stages? You're not seeing any of those different stages again. So what the theory they brought now is that the reason why you cannot see those different stages is because they, they call it selection. They call it natural selection. That is because of nature, these things start to, to evolve and move from different species and the most dominant amongst them remain and that which is not dominant come out of existence, become distinct and you will not be able to see them again. But if that was the case, then the first thing, you, will, you shouldn't have seen any ape at present. Because how is it that ape still exists, and all the rest don't exist, and only man exists? One, if all the others, the man was the strongest, and all the others became extinct, because man is dominant, then why is it that ape still exists? Ape should also not be existing. And similarly, if every single animal evolve and make ape, ape come into existence, and then they, they shouldn't have any other animals, only man alone supposed to be alive. So the theories that they have, definitely, they cannot answer their own theories. But if we believe that Allah is the, the creator of everything, and it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who was there from even the beginning, the reason they went through this it's because they do not believe that Allah is the creator. They do not believe that there is a God that creates everything. But if we believe that Allah is our creator, then that solves all the problem. Everything. Because why is the sun going like that? Why is the moon? Allah is the creator. Why is it that human beings look like that? Allah is the creator. Everything. All your answers could be, all your questions could be answered if you believe that there is a creator. And definitely there is a creator. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator. As mentioned in the hadith from Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, this thing about thinking to yourself that there is no God and that there is no one that created, everything just happened by chance. He says, this is one of the works of shaitan. This is how shaitan operates. And it's shaitan who has instilled in man to start to think like that, to think, you know what? There can't be any God. Look at the amount of fighting. How could a God want so much of fighting? So much of wars? So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, shaitan, wa ahadukum. shaitan will come to one of you. And he will say, Man khalaka kada, man khalaka kada. Who created this? You will think to yourself, Allah created this. Who created this? You will say, Allah created this. So shaitan is, in, in, is whispering to you. Asking you, who created that tree? To yourself, you say, Allah, God created that tree. And then he will say, Man khalaka rabbuk. Now, who created your Lord? If your Lord created all of this thing, then who created your Lord? So, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, this is what shaitan wants to instill in us. And he says, whenever that reaches you, fal yasta'id billah. You should seek refuge in Allah, seek protection in Allah. Say, a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim as long as any time that kind of thought comes in your mind, seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another hadith, the same hadith, the same thing, shaitan comes to you and he whispers to you. He says people will start to ask. In another hadith, it says that people, there will be some people because of how shaitan instilled in them. They will come to you, so the people now will come to you and the people themselves will start to be asking questions. Start to ask you questions. And then, after asking you all of these things, they'll say, but, but who created God? Who created Allah? And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, anytime people bring that up to you, say, Amantu Billah wa Rasul, wa Rasuli. I believe in Allah and His messengers. And the reason why you're saying, I believe in Allah, because know that Allah is Qadimun Bila Ibtida. As you are doing, number five, Allah is Qadimun Bila Ibtida. As long as you say you believe in Allah, you do not have to worry about who created Allah because your belief in Allah is that He is Qadim, 
He's always, he's eternal, he's always existent without any beginning. So there was nobody that created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So say, I believe in Allah, amantu billah. Wa I believe in his messengers because his messengers taught us who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we accept whatever the messengers taught us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So say, I believe in Allah and his messengers. In another hadith, the same thing on top Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talking about people will be asking this question who created Allah. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says, how to reply to them? Kulu Allahu ahadun, Allahu samadan, lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakullahu kufu wan ahad. Whenever anybody says that to you or even that come to your thought, recite this. Or you could even recite for yourself, Kulu Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakullahu kufu wan ahad. And then turn to your left side and spit three times. Do the action of spitting three times. And this is and then after doing that, recite Audu Billah Mina Shaitan Rajim to take away the shaitan from us. So that is the first part, believing that Allah has no beginning. And the second part of it is Da Iman Bila Intiya. Allah will always be existent and Allah will have no ending. Allah will not end. So Allah has no end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it says, and this is very Wala intiha, da'imun bila intiha is very close to number six. Number six, so we'll do the two together, the last part of number five and number six together. Number six saying, in your book you'll see, yafna wa yabid, but there's a, a little mistake in, in printing, so it, should, it was supposed to be la yafna wa la yabid. It's supposed to have a la in front of both of them, right? But it's just a, a printing error. Wala yafna wala yabid means that he never perishes nor will he end. If the lie is not there, means he will perish and he will end. So the lie has to be in front of it, but just some printing errors, so you could correct it in your books, right? La yafna wala yabid. He will never perish nor will he end. So it's similar to da imun bila, bila intiha. He is always existing without any ending, and then he is saying, la yafna wala yabid, he will never end. He will never perish. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah mentioned this clearly in Surah Rahman. In the beginning of the second ruku, he says, Kulluman alayha fan. Yafna come forward fan. Kulluman alayha fan, everything will be fan, everything will be destroyed, everything will perish. He says, the entire world, the heavens, the earth, and everything will be fan. Everything will be destroyed, everything will be ruined. وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ And only the face of Allah, ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ will remain. So Allah is saying everything will be destroyed, but only what will remain, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah will have no ending. Even on that day, when everything will be destroyed, that is just before Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Even just before that, Allah will make every single thing be destroyed, only He alone will remain. وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ and in Surah Al-Qasas, Allah mentioned a similar voice. He says, Kullu shayin halikun illa wajha. Everything will be destroyed halik. Everything will be destroyed except his face. And Allah is mentioning about his face. Allah is saying his face. As we mentioned, we believe Allah has a face, but we do not know. We cannot describe it. Only Allah knows. But the reason why Allah is saying only his face, it doesn't mean that his other parts will be destroyed and only his face will remain. He keeps saying his face, but it doesn't mean that Allah, entire of Allah also will be destroyed and only his face will remain. The reason he's saying his face is because in the norms of people, when you want to recognize somebody, you look at their face. To recognize somebody, you look at their face. If you look at their hands, you cannot recognize somebody. You look at their feet, you cannot recognize them. You recognize an individual by their face. So when Allah is saying that his face will remain, means Allah, his entirety will remain. So only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remain on that day. Others have the opinion that when Allah says everything will be destroyed except his face, means except Allah and good deeds. Except Allah and good deeds. Every other thing will be destroyed because as ayat in Surah Nahal, when Allah says, Ma in the kumyanfad wa ma in the lahi baq. Whatever you have will be destroyed. You and everything you have will be destroyed. But wa ma in the lahi baq. What is with Allah will always remain. 
So that ayah tells you that all the good deeds that you put forward, that you invested with Allah, all those good deeds will always remain. They will never be destroyed. <coughs> so some of the scholars are of the opinion that whatever good deeds you do, that will not be destroyed as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the good deeds will remain and every single other thing will be destroyed. And like that, and this as we all know will happen on Yawm al Qiyamah. On Yawm al Qiyamah, everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause to, when the trumpet is blown, everything will die. Just as how it was from the beginning. From the beginning, there was nothing, only Allah alone. There were no one singular world as they were saying, there was only Allah. And when Allah decided to create, Allah started to create. Then everything came into existence. But before the world came into existence, before anything came into existence, Allah alone was there. And Allah will always, was always existing there. So what Allah will do, Allah will make, at the end of time, Allah will make that everything turn just as how it begun. So that is Qadim. Allah will make it turn old. Just as how the moon changes into different stages and return just as how it begun. Allah will make it in such a way that it will return just as how it begun. Because when Allah was there, nothing was there. Then Allah will cause everything to be destroyed. And then Allah alone will be there. And then Allah will cause Qiyamah to come. And everybody will be resurrected. And these are the two qualities. These are two important qualities. And as we know in Ayatul Kursi, the Ayatul Kursi where Allah says, Allah la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum. Allah is al hay al qayyum. Allah is the all living. Allah lives forever. Allah will not die. Allah is the eternal. And this is two qualities. As long as you want to know if somebody is a God, they have to be able to live forever. If they cannot live forever, they cannot be God. If they cannot give life and they cannot cause death, they also cannot be God. If they themselves will be destroyed, they cannot be God. If an if a idol could fall long and break, how could they be God? If an individual could die on the cross, how could they be God? An individual, if they are not... The two qualities, as you mentioned, firstly, you cannot be a God by being created by something else. Neither you cannot be a God by being able to die and be diminished. You cannot be able to be destroyed. If you are God and you are destroyed, what will happen to everything else? What will happen to the world if you are able to be destroyed? So two qualities of God or Allah is that firstly, nobody made him exist. He was always existing by himself. Nobody created him. And secondly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not perish. Allah does not die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not come to an end. He will remain like that forever. So this, inshallah, we come to the end of tonight's session. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta, nastakfiruka wa natubi ilayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifu. Wassalamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum. In aradtum an takunu shamatan bayna al-wara. فاختفوا آثار جيل للمعالي سطرا إن أردتم أن تكونوا شامة بين الورى فاختفوا آثار جيل للمعالي سطرا جيل زيد وحسين ومعاذ والبراء